everyone and welcome to my channel Data Pairs. Today I have a really interesting and fun thing to show you. I'm going to be building this chart here and it's a funny story actually because when I first saw something like this online I really thought it was a costume visual and because I thought that I was like I'm pretty sure I can do this without using a costume visual. So I did some experimenting and I managed to build this entire visual just using standard visuals in Power BI Desktop. Yes, I didn't use any costume visuals. And today I'm going to be showing you how I managed to achieve that. But before I jump into the tutorial, I just want to ask for the usual, which is hit that subscribe button, like button, comment down below, give me ideas for my next videos. But yeah, I know you just don't want to hear me talking nonstop. So let's just jump into my laptop and I will show you how I, how I built that chart. Welcome to Power BI Desktop. We are looking at the chart that I just showed you before. And I just want to, again, as usual, as per usual, just show you how this works in practice. So it works with a filter or any other visual that you have in your report. And this solution is actually pretty simple because as you can see here, this is just a combination of donut charts and a table, just a simple table. So like I said before, it has no custom visuals whatsoever. I managed to do all of this just by being a little bit creative in Power BI Desktop. But you're probably curious on how did I build this and I talk too much, so let's jump into a new blank page and start building this from scratch. So like I mentioned before, I started with a donut chart. Let's make it really big so you can all see what's happening. Um, and also, this is not just about the combination of visuals. The trick is not just about that. It's also about being a little bit creative with that. So imagine, again, this is my, as per usual, sales uh, sample data. I have all my measures built already, so it, this video would become a little bit faster and easy to digest in a way, hopefully. Um, and I have my sales for France, Germany and somewhere else, which I lost, Canada. I have all my sales for all these three, these three countries and I'm going to start with Canada. So Canada, my first measure is very, very simple. It's just a sum of sales for the country filtered for Canada. So if I bring in this, my very simple measure, you see, it doesn't add up. Everything it goes to like 100%, the entire circle is filled. This is not necessarily what I want. So I also have a second measure, which is the sales target. So I need my sales target to basically make all of this work. In this case, I use just a random number, but you can use, of course, a measure to get the sales target or the target from somewhere. It doesn't have to be like a fixed number for this to make this uh, process simple for me and for you. I just added a very simple number, just a normal number. So we have first measure, like the very simple uh, sales measure. We have our sales target for Canada. And now I want to understand what's the difference between the sales and the target, which I also built a measure here for that. So I just did the target minus the sales so that I can have the difference and I, under and I can understand how much um, sales do I need? How many sales do I need to make or how much money from sales I need to make to reach my targets? It's just one minus the other again, very simple measure. And in the end, I just added this if condition because uh, just to uh, include the scenario where you, you reach that target and you pass that sales target and your entire donut chart will become crazy and will show very weird things. So to avoid that problem, I just added this uh, if statement, uh, this condition that if the difference between the sales and the target is higher than zero, then give me that difference. If, it, if it's lower, then it means that you reach the target and you pass that target. So don't show me anything. <coughs> so I have my sales versus target measure, but again, if I try to use it in my chart, it just doesn't add up again. Because if you remember from my previous chart, everything ends here at like three quarters of the donut. You don't see the rest of like the, the one quarter that is missing here that is kind of 
it looks like it's not even here, right? So how did I do this? This is the DAX secret that I created. In this case, so I built a very simple measure, which is called my sales dummy measure. And my sales dummy measure is basically the sum of the sales, which we have here already, plus the difference between sales and targets, and then multiply this by, by one third. You don't need to understand exactly how did I manage to come up with this. It's actually a very simple math calculation, but it does work, it does do the job, and it does kind of remove that quarter from the donut, which is exactly what we want. So if we add this measure now to the end, you will see now we have that quarter. So now we just have to play with the colors, the formatting options, and all of that. But before that, I'm just going to try to build all the other uh, donut charts. But before that, I just want to format this a little so we, we kind of... Uh, are able to do the assembly. Is it assembly? Probably not the best word, but so we can bring all the three donuts together and it will make our lives easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is to remove the background. I'm going to general effects, remove the background. I'm also going to remove the title here. I would probably also remove the tooltips because they will be weird probably. So I would remove the tooltips and also the header icons. So I would remove pretty much everything. I could in this donut to leave just the circle itself. In the visual, I'm going to remove the data labels and the legend. And for now, I'm going to leave it as it is. So we have our sales for Canada and I'm going to copy paste this visual and do the same thing for France. For France, we already have our measures too. Again, they are the exact same measures, the same three measures that will manage to do this trick for you, which is the normal sales measure filtered for France. Then we have the sales versus target, which is the target minus the sales. And then we have our dummy measure, which will give us that quarter for us to do this kind of trick and show like the donut, it only goes to three quarters. So let's bring all of this in. And as you can see, it worked perfectly. It's amazing how well this works. So we have this for France. And now the last one will be Germany. Now this might be a little bit confusing because you don't have a name yet. The one that is missing is Germany, so let's do the same. Um, and let's do this quick. And as you can see, we have all our three donuts now. And the last thing we have to do for the donuts, at least, we need to format this a little bit. So everything looks a lot nicer in the end and more like the example that I showed you. So let's go to the formatting options. Let's go to our slices. We can change the colors for Canada, like probably not red. Well, red is not a good idea. Let's leave it as a purple. And then this bit that is going to tell you how far you are from the target. Let's leave it as gray. And now the trick, we will leave the dummy bit, which is that quarter as white. So it always looks like the donut finishes here when in fact it doesn't. So it's a little trick to have or to do here in our donut chart. And now let's do the same for Germany. Same thing for France. So the last thing I'm going to do is just to change the, the radius of this, the spacing, the inner radius a little bit. So it looks again, a little bit nicer. If you make it bigger, it looks like slightly thinner or a lot thinner, which I think makes it look a lot nicer. And now I'm going to bring Germany in and I'm going to change the size. So it kind of fits inside the, the, um, our first donut. And now I just change the radius again, just to match the one that we have here for Canada and do the same thing for the last one, which is France. Let's put it here in the middle and change the radius again to match the other two, which I think it's pretty much matching already. So the last trick that I did here is that kind of labeling that I have here. And for that, I use the normal table. I have a table here, my country table, which has a flag, which if I go here, this flag is marked as a, an image URL. So I can see the image in the table instead of the URL text. So I'm going to bring in the flag, which will show as an image. And then I'm going to bring total sales. 
and I'm going to put it on purpose like in the in the beginning or before the flag because that's kind of the format that I will want in the end if you remember. Now it's time to format this table a little bit too. Let's go to the general, remove the header icons, remove the background, change the style to none so everything is gone and also change the grid so everything disappears like this uh, gray lines i'm not sure if you can see them hopefully yes so let's put it as uh, white or not even no let's remove the horizontal grid we don't want it as white and also the borders uh, you see the borders are showing here but for some very stupid reason you just have to click on one and click on it again and it disappears very weird behavior i know the last thing or one of the, the last things that I will do is remove the totals. So the totals are gone now. And in the column headers, I'm going to disable the text wrap because I want to um, maximize and minimize like the column width. And I don't want this to mess up with my titles. The titles of the columns, uh, the column headers can mess up this a little bit. So disable the text wrap and also disable the auto size kind of width of the column because again, if you have filters, if you're interacting with other visuals, this will be very weird, like a weird kind of behavior. It won't look nice. And last thing, I'm going to leave the column headers uh, text as white. So now we have almost everything we want. The only thing missing, you can again, like I said, resize this a little bit, is as you can see, the, the images are really big right now. But good thing is, you can change the image height, which will make it look smaller or bigger or maximize it or minimize it. So let's make it a little bit smaller, something like this. And now you just have to resize it to match kind of what you have in your donuts. Uh, if you're very picky like me, you probably can see that this is not exactly like in the same, uh, the alignment doesn't look 100% correct. You can fix this by going to the grid and in the options you can increase the row padding a little bit. So if you increase it a little bit it will be easier for you to make it like match in a way uh, perfectly with the circles as you can see here. So again it's just a matter of formatting things a little bit, being a little bit patient and creative and you can get something like this in less than five minutes. And I think it's a pretty awesome visual. Probably there are a lot more things that you could do with this visual, I have to confess. But for today, I'm going to leave it just with this idea. And I hope you liked this video, this tutorial, that I gave you some ideas on how to improve your visuals in Power BI. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.